I'm Lee Fisher, the head of export for Thatcher's Cider. Thatcher's is a family owned business. We're a fourth generation cider maker based here at Myrtle Farm in Somerset. We've been crafting West Country English cider since 1904 with apples grown from our very own orchards. We grow about 30 varieties of apples, many of which are bittersweet, so these are apples that are grown specifically for cider making. We're here in the back room. We've got 11 of these oak vats, English oak, uh, about 150 year old. After the cider is fermented, it's brought into the oak vats, which matures the cider. Really, it's these vats that give us that distinctive smoothness and that really rounded finish that you'll find in Thatcher cider. We're available in 25 markets around the world, uh, so 26 including the UK, and the overseas markets range from Australia, Thailand, uh, right up there to Russia. And then if we look at Europe, we're available in the English tourist bars right across uh, all the tourist markets in Spain, through to the supermarkets of Helsinki. Our share of trade from an international perspective, I would say that we're still relatively new to developing our international business. I mean, we're four years in, but that's four years of a pretty long journey. So currently, we're about 6% of our trade comes from overseas markets. The longer term objective is to get that up to in excess of 25%. But what's really important for us is making sure we do that in a controlled and a very focused way so that we build a sustainable business. In terms of tailoring our products to individual markets, I think what we always do is start with what we truly are, which is cider makers. So everything's about starting with a great tasting liquid. From a, a brand perspective, that, that's probably the most difficult bit and something you have to be very careful of. Tailoring your brand to individual cultures and even, even language to a degree is quite important. And I think a great example of that is in the US. If I refer to Somerset cider, I quite often get asked, um, what is Somerset, as opposed to where is Somerset? So in the US, we, we, we refer to it as English cider. Support from UKTI and the European Development Fund has been quite critical to us, really, on, on the journey that we've been on for four years. You know, everything from big companies to small companies can benefit. You've got the passport to export for someone just starting out on the journey, more experienced people, just having a local contact with a business advisor here in the UK or a local contact in Australia, that can be invaluable. Even, you know, the training courses are great to train the logistics department through to what paperwork needs completing. My top tips for growing export sales. I guess the first would be engage with UKTI and, and work with them as much as you can, you know, from their training courses through to their own risk services. I think from a more general perspective, one of the most important things for anyone setting out on an expert journey is about keeping control of your business. I've heard the phrase the international standard or the industry norm. There is no industry norm. Normally when you hear that, the norm is whatever suits the customer. Um, it's your business, you keep control of it. If you're not happy or you're not satisfied with conditions of trade, don't trade. You have to stay in control.